What are the five most important websites that you need as a real estate investor? This could be a wholesaler, a fix and flipper, or a tax lien and deed investor. At the end of the day, you need to have a toolbox of online resources that can really help you out in your real estate investing. So on today's Wholesale Daily Show, we are going to go ahead and share with you five websites that we feel are essential for your real estate, um, kind of like your crystal ball, to gather different data points to make sure that you're not overpaying and to get the most accurate information that you can get. My name's Dustin. I'm Josh. I'm Corey. We're the Wholesale Daily Show. If you're new to us, go ahead, hit that like button and the subscribe button if you're on YouTube and hit that reminder because we do uh, a new video five days a week for you. So we thought today we wanted to share with you some of the tools that we've found over the years that really allow us to kind of get a nice insight into our real estate deals so that we can have the best picture and not make... Not make uh, as many mistakes <laughs> on our deals. So we're gonna walk you through those, but just a, a neat little thing to think about is these tools that are at our fingertips right now make real estate investing, in my opinion, probably easier than it ever has because with the technology at our fingertips, like not even the, the, the government and Secret Service had these type of tools probably even 10, 15 years ago, even 20 years ago, these days we can go on things like Google Earth and go to the street view and look at a property. You can um, hire somebody in the Philippines for just a couple bucks an hour to do a lot of the stuff that you don't want to do. So there's a lot that you can really take advantage of if you're going to act on it. So let's walk them through the, the five sites. And Corey, why don't you uh, start off the show? You want to do the honors? Sure. All right. So... Uh... Five sites for real estate agents, or not real estate agents, real estate investing. Josh, if there's other ones you can think of, feel free. We can add them as bonus. There points. might be bonus. There yeah. may be more than five. Maybe five. But there but won't be less. There won't be less. Yeah. yeah. Less. Less. Cool. So the first one we have, and this is a very popular one. Everyone knows about it. It's Zillow. Zillow is a website that we use uh, basically when we're analyzing every deal. And it's an important website because it's popular. But just because it's popular doesn't mean it's always great. And that is a life lesson for everyone in life. Just because something's popular doesn't mean it's great. It's true. Um, so when we do use Zillow, which we do use, we take it with a grain of salt because it is based solely on algorithms and numbers in those algorithms and does not have a human brain. So we need to make sure that we're always testing it against what we know as uh, investors to get the right numbers. And Josh, you always explain it well. Would you like to explain a little the bit? The pros and cons. Definitely. I think the biggest pro is that you have access to information. Uh, a lot of things that you have access to that you need to have access to is what property has sold for in the area. So while we will use the Zestimate, which is their estimate of the house, that will not be the final number. We'll take that number and we'll test it against um, property that's sold in the area and what's actually currently on the market as well. So on Zillow, you can put in your address and then you can look around that property and uh, you know within a half mile radius or so, look at property that's recently sold. So go off the property that's recently sold and compare that against the Zestimate because there's a lot of times that the Zestimate could be way off. There's one the other day, the Zestimate said it was $200,000. And I was like, wow, that's real high. Yeah. And then doing further research, uh, we came up with that it'd be 106 to 115. And we also then verified that with our realtor as well. And that's what he came up with too. So that's just a, a small example. Of, it's a powerful thing that must be used appropriately and correctly. Mm -hmm. If you don't use it appropriately or correctly, you may burn yourself. It's Ooh. true. So even though it's probably one of the most well-known sites, Hopefully some of those little tips will help you out. And it's like anything, you, you'll develop a relationship with it and learn how to optimally use it. So It's like uh, chopping vegetables with a knife. You could cut yourself. It's true. But Ooh. that doesn't mean like knives yeah, are inherently are. bad. You this know. is deep. Just like, <laughs> just like guns. Guns aren't good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. 
That's a different topic altogether. <laughs> Just using it properly and seeing things maturely will ignite passion. Yes. Right. Well, I knew you were going to say passion. In my head, I was like, he's going to say passion. He's going to say passion. <laughs> the second website that is a very powerful tool is... <laughs> is... Area uh, Vibes. Thank you, Josh. Josh, can you tell them why they might need Area Vibes? Sorry, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, Area Vibes is going to break down neighborhoods in a city, and it's going to color code them. It's going to say if it's very bad, if it's bad, if it's neutral, if it's good, if it's great. And so these are things that you may not have a pulse on. And so they're collecting tons of information. There's demographics, there's crime, there's uh, real estate, median prices. There's so much in areavibes.com. And I mean, I think a while ago, I don't know how long ago, but probably like 15 years ago, you know, only realtors would have access to this kinds of information or you'd have to really go digging. I mean, maybe 15 years ago, I don't know. I don't know how long it's been around for. But everything is at your fingertips to know, is this a neighborhood that's bad? Is this a neighborhood that's good? I mean, it's really easy to look quickly at a Zillow number and say, oh, these values are high. And it might be wrong values and it might be in an area that nobody wants to invest in. And so Area Vibes is gonna give you that clarity. It's gonna show you, is this a good neighborhood? Is this not a good neighborhood? Um, and have tons and tons and tons of data at your fingertips. You want it, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's nice. imperative to be used. Excellent. Third website you can be looking into is? Number three is Rentometer. Mm, yeah. So we use Rentometer to grab the median rents of the properties that we are investing in. Now, like Zillow and Area Vibes, you know, it might not be accurate down to the dollar or the tens of dollar, but it gets you in the right ballpark and it can give you an idea of how much properties are renting for if you're looking to rent out a property or if one of your investors just wants to know what the property will eventually rent for. So it's a very useful tool. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's going to be more accurate for sure than Zillow or like truly a realtor or property shark, any of those guys. Yeah. Actually, a little bump onto that one. Didn't we use a web? Don't we use a website for utility bills too? This is a bonus. Oh, like... Um, I can't remember what it is, but sometimes... You want to, if you're figuring out what something rents for, or maybe Rentometer tells you what the average utility bill is. Oh, I'm not sure. Okay. I couldn't confirm or deny. There is a website that does tell you. Um, <laughs> homework. Homework, <laughs> yeah. Um, so the fourth website is? Mm, well, I I have down also Property Shark, Truly, and Realtor, but those are kind of in the same vein as Realtor. Same vein. What about uh, a bonus, not a website, but an app is LandGlide, mm. which we use quite frequently. Josh, you wanna? Yeah, any kind of tax sales you're doing, LandGlide is gonna be, what's up, Yo-Yo? Oh, I, I'll, 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 I'll read oh, so sick. Yeah, LandGlide.com is gonna be like a secret weapon that you can use. And in tax sales, one of the most confusing things about tax sales is what's actually going up for auction is the parcel, not an address. And so you may look at a list and it says parcel number 1234-9578, property address 123 Red Shark Alley. But Red Shark Alley uh, is the property address. But what if the parcel is actually just the driveway? It's not crazy. We've seen it hundreds of times. And so there's sometimes, you know, at tax sales, parcels are divided up and you have an irregular parcel. And that may be what's actually going to the sale not the house, not that, not that parcel. So LandGlide will show you the parcel, uh, it'll show you the, the map of the parcel, and on top of that, you can get it on an app on your phone, and so you can physically see where you are in relation to the property or the, the parcel. So there's been many times that we've been driving around, and we use LandGlide, and we can see, okay, it starts right here, and we can look and see it's just the driveway, it's not the house, and we've seen parcels like that, you know, sell way, way, way too high. So LandGlide is like one of the best tools you can use if you're into that kind of foreclosure sale or that vein of real estate investing. And then one of the fifth ones that I mentioned earlier is the power of Google um, and Google Street View. Before we actually go out and look at anything, we're always, we wanna check out the Street View, we wanna check out the neighborhood. Um, I think Zillow will give you some insight into that mm -hmm. as well which is good, but we like to, to kind of go 
a little extra step and you can have a maneuverability that is um, definitely much more efficient within the Google Earth app. And I think that's just one of the things that we kind of take for granted now is that mm -hmm. you can go on your computer and somebody has driven every street in North America so that we can go online and just zoom in and, and rotate around. And I think that's that's just fascinating. So take it one step further too. Yeah. Even within like the Google Street View, you can actually look and see different years that they've taken photos. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you can go back to 2010 sometimes. I mean, a lot of times you'll see this. This is pretty common. You can see the snapshot they took in 2010, that maybe they took one in 2013, 2016. And a lot of times you can then see the history of the property. You can say, oh, wow, you know, in 2012, this thing started to really, really go downhill. And then you can see in 2014, okay, this is clearly vacant, it's boarded up. And then you can see in 2017, it's still boarded up. And so you can say it's been five years boarded up. And that's gonna provide so much data that, I mean, you can maybe find that out if you're talking to neighbors, mm -hmm. but you can just look at Google Street View mm -hmm. and see the history of the house a lot of times. And remember, if you're out buying auction property or tax deed property, Google Earth is, sometimes that image could be a year old. So we've seen people buy properties at auctions just off of Google Earth. And mm -hmm. when we've actually went to look at it, it's been burnt down or flooded or completely vandalized in the last couple months. Or demolished. <clears throat> or demolished, yeah. And then they spent a lot of money on the property and then there's nothing inside. Yes. Um, yeah, that's hard to come back from. Yeah. Quite bad. One of the worst I saw was an apartment <coughs> building, and the water main had broke on the second floor and just completely flooded the place in the winter. And there was actually like four feet of ice throughout the whole thing. Ooh. And when the guy bought it, I think for like 50 grand, we showed him video of like, hey, you went and saw this thing, right? And he's like, oh, no, I looked at the picture. And we showed him the video, and his, his jaw hit the floor. And yeah. he was devastated, so... Crazy. Important stuff there. Any bonus ones that we can think of really quick? Yeah, I mean, you know, anytime you're doing wholesaling, this happens all the time. We talk to people and they tell us that they are on title. They tell us that they have the right to sell this house. And a quick check that you can do that takes five minutes is looking at the tax collector's website, the county oh, auditor's nice. website, and seeing who is on title. And I mean, if even if you want to take it one step further, uh, most um, counties will have deeds uh, online so you can go right into the website and check it you know we're talking to someone uh, yesterday we went to do a first home visit and um, we're showing that this guy's not on title and so he told us we were on title and you know we take him at his word sometimes we take people at their word other times you know you can double check or verify but it's going to take two three minutes to just open that up on the website and you can find out who is actually on title so as a real estate investor that's a, a massive asset just for using Whatever. I'm, I'm done talking. <laughs> they were curious about a good website for tax liens. I would say just Google whatever county, but Arizona and Florida are great websites for tax liens. Just Google tax liens Arizona or tax liens Florida, and it should pull up the county website that uh, corresponds to that county. It's oh, here's over. some more bonus ones. Bid4assets.com. B-I-D, the number mm. four assets.com you can see people that are selling tax sale property also counties that are selling tax sale property uh, what's the other one that we use that's got a lot of online auction.com auction.com of course too and there's another one real auction uh, yeah real auction that's got a lot of online ones real auction.com and so I mean those are all great websites for tax liens and tax deeds nice it's that time day. If you have a question, ask us in the comments, and uh, we'll enter to you in one of these uh, modern REI shirts. Sick. Josh is not uh. wearing it today, <laughs> but uh, nice linens. So thanks a lot for watching. Hit that uh, question button. We'll put you in a draw to win. And then from there, subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot for tuning in.